in this democracy, men will neither be slaves to capitalism, nor to a party, nor to the state. Man will be free. Sir, it is fashionable in our times to argue that the social changes and the economic changes that our present times require cannot be made unless individual liberty and democracy are first destroyed and an all-powerful state can push its programs through. This resolution, if I read it aright, is a refutation of that thesis. It envisages far-reaching social changes, social justice in the fullest sense. At the same time, it works for those social changes through the mechanism of political democracy and individual liberty. To those defeatists who say it can't be done, this resolution says it can be done and we have every intention of doing it. The central problem of our times is whether the state is to own the people or the people are to own the state. Whether people own the state, the state is a mere instrument subordinate to the people, serving the people. It only takes away the liberty of the individual to the extent that the people really desire it. Where the state owns the people, the people are mere robots, screws in a big machine, pushed about here and there by the whims of an all-powerful dictator or an all-powerful party. It is because I believe, sir, that this resolution points the direction to a constitution where the people will be in the center, where the individual and the development of the individual personality will be the main aim of our social good, that I support this part of the resolution, this aspect of it, because I believe that as the fathers of the United States Constitution put it, every individual Indian has an inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness.